So this is gamification strategies to increase student participation. And I'm Samantha. Um, why should you listen to what I have to say? Well, I have a master's in readings from King's College and I'm currently working on my doctorate in educational technology from Wilkes University. I'm an advocate for racial, cultural, and gender diversity in children's literature, and my current research explores utilizing gamification to enhance student motivation, comprehension, and increase self-regulation in student learning. So I'm currently uh, knee-deep in gamification, as it were, so this is right up my alley and I'm happy to share everything with you. Um, I know everybody might not be a gamification expert, so I'm definitely going to take things on the easier side of life. and. Um, with enough turnout and interest, we can always go back and do maybe another presentation where we get more into like the, the meat of things and different kind of creation for gamification because it's a really fun topic. So first, let's start off with a question. Um, which would you prefer? We all have to sanitize everything now. Unfortunately, this is the world we live in. But when you are sanitizing, you have to wait most of the times. You're not just able to, you know, spray and wipe, especially at the school district I am. You need to wait three minutes every time you spray every hour. So your students, you think they want to just be waiting? Or do you think they would rather be snail racing? Just by taking that waiting time and making it into a game, it definitely gets kids more active, engaged, gives them something to do, because as we know, leaving students alone for three minutes, leaving students alone for 30 seconds is probably not the safest choice. So we're going to go through what is snail racing later and how you can incorporate it, but I just wanted you to think, have that mindset going into gamification, because that's really one of the fun things about it. So what is gamification? Gamification is such an interesting topic because there isn't a definition. If you ask 100 different researchers, you will literally get 100 different answers. The nitty gritty, the meat of it is specifically the application of game elements into a non-game setting. So if you think of a classroom, normally it's not a game, except if you're in my classroom, and soon your classrooms. Did you actually know that gamification has been around a really long time? It's nothing new. Um, the best example I can think of that instantly everyone will probably remember was the Monopoly um, at McDonald's specifically. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, whether you're McDonald's eaters or not, you saw the commercials on TV. These existed when commercial fast forwarding wasn't a thing. And maybe you wanted McDonald's, maybe you didn't, maybe you just wanted Monopoly. I like free stuff. So would I go from that small drink to that large drink? Because now I have a chance to win free stuff. Yeah, I would. Same with the fries. So they were able to instantly realize, hey, I could double up or I could make more money. And marketing and sales everywhere has been using gamification for a really long time. How many times have you been to a business and you have a punch card to come back? That's just a game. And now that we are able to incorporate this into education, it unlocks tons and tons of possibilities. So why should you use this in education? Because it can expand student enthusiasm, improve their motivation, enrich engagement, enhance their experience, and what we're going to talk about today, increase student participation. And honestly, a lot more stuff. Those have been proven research methods for some of the stuff that I'm going to be looking into personally. That's why it's not on the list, like self-regulation. So what could this look like in a classroom? Well, we're going to go through tons of different um, options and ideas today on how you can make this work in your classroom um, and what it would look like. But incorporating any of those game elements into your room makes it gamification. So what could Sorry, it look like? I couldn't hear. Sorry, my Siri wanted to participate. What could it look like? It could look like this. So this is just a slide of Deal or No Deal. And I'm sure some of you recognize this. And if not, I'm sure some of the kids would. Now, obviously, I don't have it set up as a game for us to play today. I have it used as a manipulative. But let your mind start going. How could we use this? What if I had this slide and we used it for... Now, once again, you could use most of these for virtual or in-person. I've actually taught both this year, as I'm sure most of you have, but this could be used in-person as well as virtual. But thinking about sending this out to all your virtual students and telling them, all right, pick five cases and you do the five problems in those five cases. Or have a student come up to your smart board and pick their five cases. Um, I have 
actually, this is one of the widgets I was telling you about earlier when I set this up. Give me one second. When I set this up, I'm still able to manipulate the slide. So now I can cross these out as we go and still have it look almost like a presentation. But imagine letting students go through and pick and then whatever case you pick, that's going to be your problem you have to do. Or that's going to be the vocabulary word you have to write. Have 18 students, maybe you have less, maybe you have more, you can set it up however you want. And don't start thinking this looks like a lot of work because it's a free template that I found online that I will tell you guys how to get. There's no extra, well, there's a little extra work by putting the data in here versus printing out a worksheet. Um, and we're going to range all around today on like how hard and how easy stuff is. But it's not like I created this. I made sure to pick all the stuff today that you easily could do with very little effort. But today, hiding under all these cases are all the ways you could see game, um, gamification in the classroom. So what might that look like in the classroom? It might look like character upgrades. It might look like visual elements. It might look like progress bars. How could gamification look like in the classroom? It could look like replays or do-overs. All of these things you see are things that exist in video games. And the reason students play video games or games in general are because of the feedback they get that gives them that instant gratification or that instant success. And if they're unsuccessful, they get to try again and they get better. Video games teach students how to move on and to learn. Think about that horrible video game you don't want the kids playing to begin with. Maybe those um, adventure games or those shooter games that we don't want to talk about they still learn from those games. They learn, okay, I did this, I failed, let me go back and try this instead. The games are giving them those instant feedback. They're getting that replay and do over. They're seeing the challenge. They're getting their prize at the end. They're able to customize their avatar. All the things on the screen are reasons they love video games. So why as teachers should you not take all of these awesome things that they love and move them into your classroom? All of those things I talked about earlier, the different types of ways we can be successful and engaged, all can happen by incorporating some or all of these. But it can be overwhelming. So we're gonna do it in nice, small, little fun steps to make students have fun and you have fun. Because teaching all day, if it's not fun, you're not doing it right. At least I think so. How could teaching be fun? So, I picked this one because it's kind of ironic with this being um, in the media these days. But, I mean, we don't say hangman anymore, but how about doing your vocabulary with Mr. Potato Head? All right, let's say I got one of my, you know, guesses. Oh, sorry, there's no J's in our word today. All right, I better add, a, add an arm to our Potato Head over here. Oh, I picked a hat, sorry. Let's see, oh, sorry, no X's, bad guess. Let's add an arm. It has this nice visual representation for students that they're used to. They, they know the shapes of a body. They have been able to play with potato head. Oh, sorry, there's no T's either. But let's say we get some good guesses. And guess what? We're just playing games. Imagine throwing this on the smart board and letting your students review their vocabulary this way. Imagine sending it out individually and having students send it back completed or just playing a nice group game virtually. I just did that all drag and drop. That wasn't pre-set up. You could do it teaching virtually too. And once again, this is a free online template. I didn't create anything. Not that you couldn't, but I didn't. How about old-fashioned shoots and ladders? While you're not able to have all your students sitting around a board right now because of COVID, and that's way too close, project this on the screen. What if I used it for vocabulary? Each space is a vocabulary word. If you land on that space, you can stay there if you can tell me the word. Um, you can set it up with a nice little rollable dice, make them stop it and move that many places, put their name on it. If you don't want to type all the vocabulary on here, have them on little cards and just draw one just like you would 
draw to see if you get to move. You don't have to only have four players. Change your colors, double them up, have your whole classroom, or do it in teams. Forget vocabulary, put math problems in there. Put math problems on the cards. See who gets to finish first. Just make it fun, make it into a game. Here's another board game. Once again, if you guys have kind of noticed or not on the one side, I'm on slidesmania.com to get so many of these interactives. Um, they're already set up and done for you. They're completely free downloads and you just have to edit them. But on Slides Mania here, we have another one where we get to roll our dice. If I exit out of this full screen, um, I would have pieces up here, just like we did before with my potato head. And we could go ahead and move our piece and maybe do that challenge. What would an activity card look like? This is what an activity card would look like. Once I land on the one, I would click on it and we would get to go check some stuff out. In this case, we're actually going to go check out websites that are already set up to help us with gamification. All right, let me exit out of this presentation. So some of the websites that we are going to look at today, let's see. Sorry guys. So these are the sources we're going to go ahead and look through today. So we have different kinds of gamification creation sites like Hoop, Look at Jeopardy Labs, Factile, and Flippity. And then we're going to go ahead and go through a bunch of gamification universes like Prodigy, Dreamscape, Bottle Learning, and I have a bonus of online stopwatch for us. Now these are such a small fraction of the gamification out there, but the nice part about every one I picked here, they're all completely free, which as a teacher I know we love because there's no extra room in the budget to pay for education of gamification stuff. And a lot of these have um, very minimal effort on your part, and a lot of them have free stuff that's already created that you're able to utilize. Okay, so let's look at Kahoot. Kahoot is one that's kind of been around a while and a lot of people know about it. This is the general setup of Kahoot. You'll get a question, you'll get four different answer choices or less. I think you can do just true and false as well. And as you can see, what the student could see on their smartphone or on their um, own computer is just the four color choices. So with the clientele that I work with, I actually teach, I don't think I said, I apologize, I teach emotional support currently um, at New Story. And with that, I have students that can and can't read in my classroom. So trying to do this when your students can't read means now you're seeing the color as well as the answer. Fine, right? If you look down here, you see this 41. That's a timer because this is a screenshot, it's not counting down. But now, as the teacher, I have to read the question and read the answer choices as fast as humanly possible so my students can pick it, the correct one. And trying to say the color and the answer, I don't know why, but it's not as easy as you would think. So with Kahoot, it does have a little bit of downfalls, but it's also one of the first original ones out there. So the reason I brought it up first is I want to show you Kahoot plus a million, and that's going to be Look It. Okay, so the downfalls that Kahoot does have is the fact that you have to read um, everything if a student is not able to, and then it's also time-based. And especially with a lot of the special education students, having people on a time crunch is not the best choice. Um, they can get very frustrated, upset, and then quit altogether, or they're just rapid fire answering just to get an answer. So this form of gamification is great, but I have a better one for us. So we're actually gonna check out the website itself. Um, so one oh, bonus about Kahoot, um, this was one that I actually was able to look at today. When you click on discover here, you can type in whatever you're working with and then check out what already exists. There's tons on area and perimeter, just what I'm currently teaching. There's tons on area and perimeter and then all the questions are here. You're able to check them out. Is this appropriate for my students and then play and it actually gives you a code. All your students would go to play Kahoot, type in your code and then now they have on their phone or on their own little tablet will have almost like a buzz in. So that was the screen we were seeing on the phone before. So if you're not familiar with Kahoot, um, I'm going to show you a lot more and more in Blook It, and it's a little similar with the setup. But the nice part is a lot of this stuff already exists. So if you're not like, oh man, I'm working on something, see if some gamification already is out there for your source instead of creating something. 
So Look It is gamification done extremely, extremely well for a specific experience. So with these, you're looking for that game that I'm playing a board game and I'm winning, or I'm playing a board game and I'm succeeding, versus um, being in a whole gamified universe that incorporates multiple features. So that's what we're looking at first, those one-offs, this making it into a game. With this one, you can see ones that already exist. Once again, it has all of the questions done. You can kind of check them out. And you do see there is a time limit on some of them. You can turn that on or off as well, which is one of the features I really like. When you go to host, this is where it gets great. So before, with Kahoot, it looks like this. It's called the classic. You have your picture at the top, you have your choices, that's it. So you have your, um, answer questions, earn points, end of story. We know that students don't always respond the best that way. They can get upset, they cannot like it. So we have all of these different options here with Look It. So let's look at one um, actually I used today in my classroom. So we have um, Gold Quest. So the students get to build their riches by answering questions. And then once they answer their questions, I don't know if you can kind of see it, it's kind of hidden. There are three treasure chests here. They get to pick a chest and then whatever's in the chest they get. Sometimes it's stealing points from a friend. Sometimes it's trading all their points with a friend. I say points, but it's actually gold at that point. There is a, a random, a random amount of gold that they get, or they could lose a percentage or gain a percentage. With it being random, all students are encouraged to keep going and try their best and they're not getting discouraged because they didn't answer first. They're not getting discouraged because it's stuck to a time limit. Everyone has a chance of winning and it's completely random. And the nice part is on your screen, on your smart board, you're able to project students points, who's stealing from who, but each of your computer and your tablets have the question have the answers on them and it's timed as a whole event like I did mine for 20 minutes today and they got to answer those questions as many times as they wanted and it mixed up the order so they could never remember because it was once again we were doing area and perimeter so they couldn't remember those crazy numbers and it was great they had a lot of fun they were yelling oh man I can't believe you stole my coins but not once did I hear someone go I don't want to do area and perimeter this is dumb. I don't want to see your worksheet anymore. They were having fun and playing a game. I had students pumped about going into math. So with Blooka and Kahoot and some of the other ones, you will need some type of one-on-one -on -one device. Um, hit your high school students, I let them bust out their phone and they get so excited. And you'll know if they're, you know, on a different site or not participating appropriately because their name will pop off your screen because they're not logged in anymore, which means, hey, what are you doing? You're not on the website you're supposed to be anymore. What's going on? And that's a very helpful feature as well. But students are usually pretty good because once again, they're already playing a game in school. So they're interested. All right. So that is Look It. There are tons of other options. Um, let me pick just one random other one. This cafe one. You're serving customers food, restocking supplies by answering questions, and buying upgrades to create your own awesome cafe. So I can check out my kids' cafes on my screen behind me, or if you're once again virtual, you can see it on your screen and whatever screen you share, and they're all on their own screen. So it's pretty great. All right. So that is Look It. I highly recommend checking it out. Tons of things already exist for it, so you don't have to create any of your own. Or if you want to, it's super duper easy. You fill in the question, you fill in the template, and add visuals if you're feeling fun. I've also used it as a really great review source, and then printed out the questions and answers and given the students the same exact test that we just took for fun. And you should see the score increases. because not because they could remember the answers, but they were practicing, actually practicing. All right, so let's check out another website here. That's the book I had prepared. Yep. Yeah. 
All right. So Jeopardy Labs is a really fun way, once again, to create a game out of the material you're covering. You can create one or you can find one that already exists. Once again, completely free. Um, when you go to join or log in, um, you can do a paid version, but please don't. You don't need it. Um, once you go to find a Jeopardy game, there's tons of different topics. Oh, look, social skills. And the really cool part, how this is set up, is you can already see the questions and hover over it to see an answer. So I just burped really loudly in the middle of a silent room. I should say, excuse me. So really fun ones. Um, so the, here's Jeopardy Labs. You would just click on what you wanted to do. Um, one really fun feature here is you can edit someone else's and just it'll let you save it with your special link. So now it's yours. So one of the other things about the book, it's that you find you can't edit someone else's. You can just edit a copy of it, but this way too. And once again, you can print it so you can have the reference for yourself so you don't have to remember. And the great part about Jeopardy Labs, when you set it up, you get to assign the points. So if you have a bunch of different teams or multiple students answering, you can give everyone credit who got it right if you wanted. Or you can subtract points too and make them go in the negative, just like real Jeopardy. I've played this before a test and then literally printed it out and made them match up the question and answers as then the test that I was able to do. So, hey, we just reviewed this. If you actually paid attention, you should get 100 on this. Also, it helps with the matching because it's process elimination. But I was able to print it right from here and had them cut it up. Um, if they know that you're testing them on it and that's why they're cutting it up, they may also remember what order they were in. But I've done modifications where, hey, only cut up a column at a time because I'm working with you and, you know, I know you need less choices and less spread out. Um, I've had them only cut up the answers and glue them on top, too. So depending on, it's tons of modifications are available. But once again, very minimal effort to do a fun gamification activity. Um, besides this one, which once again is called Jeopardy Labs, there is one here that I wanted to show you called Play Factile. So Factile is very similar to Jeopardy. Um, it's great if you're doing virtual. And once again, if you can kind of see on a cell phone screen, you would get to buzz in. So when you're doing Jeopardy Labs, you know, you have to wait for your students to shout out or yell out the answer. So that may not be the best option for virtual, but because I want to incorporate both, Play Factile lets students buzz in. Uh, once again, there are already games there. You can create your own. Um, the only thing with this one is the points are, are only awarded to whoever gets it correct. It automatically does the points. There's no option for you to go, no, no, just kidding. A bunch of people got it correct. Um, but it's just another version of a cool Jeopardy. And you can kind of see there's tons of different characters. And I think you can have up to like 80 characters, if not more. So not that any classroom hopefully is that big, but you can really do a full class. So that's playfactile.com. It's set up very similar to Jeopardy Labs. I just wanted to give that additional option. So while you could do it in school as well, um, the only really big difference, which one I would choose, would depend on what modifications you were trying to do by points. Also, Jeopardy Labs has the easy printables that are kind of right there embedded where Play Factile does not. All right, so those are all of the gamification creations, except for um, my friend Flippity. This is one of my favorite websites. I have it pinned to my smart board. I use it so often. And let me show you why. So Flippity is actually a .NET. So as you can kind of see, Flippity has tons of options. There's flashcards, creating a quiz show, a random generator, um, board games, word manipulatives, creating your own matching game with images. As you can see, this one matches Verde and the color green, so you can match two different things, not only the same things. Timeline, bingo. Now you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is going to be so much work. Let me show you. There is a skip the spreadsheet option where you can just dump words just like this. Um, I utilized this last week when I was teaching phonics to my one reading group and I dumped all the words we had learned so far because we've hit a 
it's a, a newer group. We haven't been having this group for so long. So there's not tons of words. I think I put like a hundred in there that they had mastered. And I was able to put long vowels and dump them in here. In, in two minutes, I was able to click on this bingo tab. Print out all of the 20 different bingo cards. Now, granted, they're not full because there's not enough words here, but if it if it was enough words, it would be full. They're all different, so there's no, oh, we all won bingo. No, all different. And then I was able to come here to my randomizer wheel, spin it. And now for my bingo game, France was called. And guess what? There's an X here that gets rid of France off the list. So you can't accidentally call it twice. It is ready to go. All I had to do is input the words. That's just one small, small way you can use Flippity. Um, there's a random name picker. So all your students' names are in there and you can randomly spin for one student. Let's say it's time to do groups. You don't have to decide anymore. It does it for you and now it's a game. Oh, I don't like that group. That one looks better. Print it, ready to go. Let's see. How about, you know what, that, that uh, potato head looks kind of complicated. I don't know if I want to build that. What if I could melt a snowman instead? Oh, there's an L in that word. Oh no, no H. It starts to calculate the letters up top and it slowly melts. Oh, I think I figured out what it was. All right, let's get a few more wrong. And you can watch, how much fun do you think your students would have watching your snowman slowly melt? Oh man, he's a puddle. Now you don't even have to do the Mrs. P the Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head debate at all, or um, have to worry about creating anything. All I have is my list of words. And what if they're your vocab words for the week? They're in there for the week. And then you just have to decide what activity you're going to do with it. Sorry, I keep trying to change tabs and it brings down the, uh, do you want to keep sharing your screen question? All right, let's go. Here's my matching game. Throwing this on the smart board and letting kids figure it out. Now, this matching game, I will say, <coughs> excuse me, this matching game is set up that it matches Germany with Germany. But if you actually go through in advance and you go to the other one that I showed you in the beginning, um, I'll show you in one second. Let's see. If you go back to the featured ones, not skip the spreadsheet, this matching game, you pre-do it so you get to pick two different things that can match, like the word and the definition. Where if you're doing easier comp, um, you know, choices like CVC words, can and can, you're okay that they match each other. All right, let's see what else was on my list that I wanted to show you. The bingo, the matching game, the tournament bracket was the big wheel I used to utilize the bingo. Um, a randomizer wheel, uh, different manipulatives. So if I wanted to do some sentence building, if I wanted to work on some fun poetry, moves around really nice. Got a lot of flippity windows open. The nice part is it opens a new window whenever you pick one of those activities. Oh, sorry, I went back a tap too far. Um, not that we're making word clouds anytime soon with our words, but why not? It exists. Okay? So all of that stuff is there for you with Flippity. So I do highly recommend checking it out. It is a really fun, different way to instantly make something a game if you weren't prepared for a game. Have your students give you the words. Hey, what are our vocabulary words this week? Type them out and make it into a game. I got 10 minutes. Let's turn it into, you know, spin the wheel. Hey, tell me what that word means. Spin the wheel. Tell me what that word means. An instant gamified time killer that your students are instantly intrigued in.
All right. So those are all the gamification creations that I wanted to go over today, and I want to go over a few of the universes. So what I mean by a gamified universe is it incorporates tons of the features we discussed earlier. So if I scoot back here for one second, a universe is going to incorporate tons of these things. It incorporates the storytelling, the ones I'm covering today, storytelling, uh, badges, you have avatars, different stages, in-game maps, character upgrades, scoreboards, all these things you'd get from a video game and it's already created in an educational universe. There's nothing extra you have to create or do other than sign up and give them a username. Um, if you haven't heard of Prodigy, this is one of my favorites. I utilize this so often in math. Um, it kind of looks like it does on the screen here. You have a character who's moving on, having different choices, and it's completely math-based. Think Harry Potter, meets Pokemon, and every time you want to cast a spell, you have to do a math problem. It is self-learning. So if you have your students start on like the first grade level or even take the intro test, it will place them. So if the students get a whole bunch correct, it moves them up. If they're getting a bunch wrong, it moves them down to a different level. It knows where they are, and it, teaching them in that zone of proximal development is just amazing. Um, the only thing is I do tell my students, hey, I can't help you because if I help you, it's going to, um, you know, I explain it to them. It's going to change your level and you're going to get harder stuff. But I will look at it and go, oh, wait, I can just teach you this. You'll instantly grasp it if it's that type of concept. So it really is a fantastic um, resource, whether it's my students have extra time at the end of the day or, you know, you need them to, if you're teaching virtually and you need to do some small groups or in-person small groups, you have Play Prodigy. The other half, I'm going to work with this specific skill set. And then you can swap or whatever you need to do. But now they're playing math. You get to collect all the data because all of the information is saved in the system. And you can see how many questions did they answer? Were they just playing around and not answering questions? Did they have to try it multiple times? How did they do? And it's definitely social because all your kids are in the same class. They can go to one of the certain fields and they can battle each other. And they'll want to play it. I have, and I mean want to play it. I have my students for brain breaks and free computer time saying, can I play Prodigy? Is that cool? Can I get my headphones so I can have the music? They want to be on this website. They love it. And it's got math from first through eighth grade. So I highly recommend it and completely free. Next, I want to talk to you about is Dreamscape. Um, I am newer to Dreamscape. I was doing a lot of research through for gamification, and I tumbled upon Dreamscape. Um, if you look down here at this little creature, the first thing I think of is Five Nights at Freddy's. While it's not, and if you're a teacher of uh, middle school boys, you know exactly what that is um, and how not school appropriate it is, but letting them look at a creature that looks similar draws in their interest. Um, this is Prodigy for reading. It has a whole setup, a whole universe where they get to go and collect stuff and have battles, but it's for reading comprehension. There are two options. It can read to them by clicking the little like volume, you know, the little icon, or you can turn that off and make them read it themselves. So it is very versatile for, I have like non-readers or low-level readers, but have high comprehension. I have a student who's on a kindergarten level and his comprehension is on eighth grade where it should be. So it's amazing that we can utilize it for different things. They um, enjoy playing this one. It's something different. I was able to even use the data and use it for his progress monitoring by turning on the comprehension on a certain level for him and making it harder for that one just to use for progress monitoring scores. So it's just a fantastic extra feature um, because it's reading and reading comprehension in a whole gamified universe. All right, and the last gamified universe I have for you is bottle learning. It is another math um, universe, and one of the main differences in bottle learning versus prodigy is going to be that in bottle learning, once you get a few correct, you get to do the activity versus visually seeing it. So I think it just depends on your students' interests. Um, with this one, the math is also a lot lower. It has kindergarten and preschool math. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. I'm so sorry. It has kindergarten and preschool math, 
And after you do your activity, or you do your math problems, excuse me, you get an activity like trying to shoot a soccer ball in the net or flinging a basketball where you actually have to do it yourself. So they get that instant reward of a game. And it's still kind of a universe. They still kind of travel along the path, pick where they want to go, what kind of problems. They kind of think they're picking what kind of problems, but the math really doesn't give them a choice. Um, so there's bottle learning. So you just kind of have to know your students, which would they be more interested in. Uh, with that prodigy, it has that gamified setup where they're in a universe and they're solving and fighting Pokemon slash Harry Potter. Here they're getting to play a little mini game as they go through. And then once again, this math does go a little bit lower. So those are my three gamified universes. Um, the last thing I wanted to do is my bonus stopwatch website here. So this website looks a little busy, but the features on it make it totally worth it. And I did tease earlier the duck race, or excuse me, the snail race. I also utilize the duck race. So with the snail race timer, I utilize the timer. Like I said, I use it every day, multiple times a day when we are um, cleaning desks. And you can go ahead and, uh, you know, type in, for our demonstration, we can do 10 seconds. You can type in students' names. I do initials, and they get to cheer on their snail while it's racing. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do some numbers. And all you have to do, oh, by the way, you can change the snails from slow to fast. And that's it. <laughs> I usually turn off the music, but still leave the cheers on for the audio. Now I'm just going to turn it off so it's not too much um, extra noise. But as you can see, the snails went very fast because it's 10 seconds, but three minutes of watching your snail race, you get one that falls super behind and you're like, did you sleep? What are you doing? Wake up. I'm not allowed to sleep. Neither are you. It's my favorite quote from my classroom when they're yelling at their snails and they're talking about how they can't sleep. Why is he? Um, make it into a game. Make it who gets to line up first or why, uh, who gets to, you know, pick the lunch, you know, activity or the lunch visual. Sometimes we put on, you know, calming stuff on the smart board while we're having lunch. Who wants to pick it today? Are we going fish or underwater? We do one of the Disney, um, you know, backgrounds for lunch. Who knows? I even have it set up where I leave it and I hit race again. I even shuffle the characters and we hit start and I leave up my three minute timer all the time. Now, of course, this website doesn't just have timers. There are clocks, random generators, name pickers. Um, let's see, chance games. I utilize this one all the time and there is a very cool dice that's virtual and it does a nice job of letting me roll a dice that everyone can see. And it's just a click and it rolls again. And once again, it can be done full screen too. There are lots of different ones on this website. Different spinners, different dice, um, a little rock, paper, scissors action, whatever you wanted to do. Let's say you have all your students stand up. And during this three minutes while we're, you know, cleaning desks, Everyone plays their rock, paper, scissors, they give you their answer, and now you do the computer one and see who's out. If you're out, you have to sit. They might have to sit on the floor because their desk's getting sprayed, but you kind of get the picture. Let's do it as a morning activity. Everybody's standing up, stretching out all of our sillies, getting ready for the day, right? All right, let's play our rock, paper, scissors. See who's the last man standing. All right, so I have given you quite a lot of different resources and activities, and I have one more instant activity for instant game for anything you're doing, and then I'm going to open it up to questions for you guys. So this is an instant game, and I call it Winner Winner. I put mine up to 100. You can do whatever you want in your classroom. I put it on a poster in my classroom. Um, I also have it virtually, but whatever. Uh, sometimes I'm using the smart board too much, as you can imagine, so I leave this on a poster so it's off to the side. Anytime a student is asking me a question or checking their worksheet, if they get it right, do a good job, I tell them to go pick a spot on my winner winner board and put their initials. Once my winner winner board is filled up, we go to a random number generator. Any of the websites like Flippity or the uh, timer one that I showed you have them. You can even just Google one if you really wanted. Then you spin it, and whoever it lands on, 
is the winner on the lunar winner board. You've now taken all of the worksheets you made for a day and turned it into a game. Every time you go around and check a student's, oh, good job, you got that one correct. Go hop up and put your name on the winner winner board. You pick the space. Oh, you know what? Thank you so much for helping your friend. You're definitely being a winner. Go ahead and go pick a spot on your winner winner board. This is the closest I could get to a zero effort game. You can make this and put it on your smart board. You don't have to do 100. Let's say, oh man, 100 is going to be a lot to get to. I only have, I mean, honestly, I only have five kids in my classroom. So I didn't start at 100 because that would be a lot. But let's say if I did, you know, one through 20 and did a nice little board. All right, winner, winner's up to 20 today. Winner gets something from the treasure chest. Let's see if we can finish it in one day. It's an instant game. So everything, they're raising their hand, they're participating, they're getting their papers checked, answers checked. While you're walking around, you have now have a game instantly. So I just wanted to leave you with that one instant game and put you in that gamified mindset and think about all the ways you could use the resources I shared and turn them into games that are appropriate for your classroom and modify them in ways that'll help your students um, be more interested and participate. I'm going to throw um, this slide back up with our source list. So if you didn't get any of them, you can grab them all and then open it up for questions. I think I have to make this full screen. Sorry, guys. Hmm. Anybody wants to read me any questions while I figure this out, you let me know. I'm trying to make my video full screen so I can see the Q&A box. All right, so if anyone has any questions, you can type them in the Q&A box or the chat box. We'll give people just a, a minute to get their questions out there. Once again, while you guys are typing, thank you so much for coming and spending an hour almost with me after a full school day. I really appreciate it. And I hope you learned something and took something away. Even if it's, you know what, I like this idea, but none of that works for me. I'm going to make something into a game tomorrow because that's all I want is the students to be happy and successful and have a little game in their day. All right. All right, while you guys are typing, I will throw um, that back up to make sure you guys are able to get all those resources. But with the screen shared, I, oh, there we go. Now I can see the questions if I have any. Perfect. Well, I'm sure that everyone's head is buzzing with all of the new information. Um, as always, everyone who signed up to participate, um, as a participant, even if those who didn't, um, weren't able to attend tonight, we will send the YouTube link out. Mm -hmm. And um, people can always email in their questions after. Um, actually, Samantha, if you want to stop sharing your screen, I'm going to put up some some of our information here, and I'm gonna turn it over to Sandy for a minute. Absolutely. Thanks. So this is um, some content. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Um, so we do have a couple of questions. So let's get to those first before we go on. Um, so we have a question about which are the resources that you've had the most success with? You're muted, Samantha. 
<laughs> of course I am. We were having so much technology <laughs> success. I had to mix it up a little. <laughs> um, looking at all of those resources, I would definitely say Universe Wise Prodigy is a favorite. They ask to play it all the time. So I definitely recommend Prodigy. If you're just thinking, oh, which one of these would I like to try out? I definitely recommend Prodigy for a good universe. And then as far as creating games, I definitely recommend going into Blook It. Um, that's got tons already existing. And start out with something fun. Um, when I looked at it and I brought it up, there was the the logo one make it a game with your students see what they recognize from their community put that one up and say hey i mean the one it's built in it has the youtube logo your students know the youtube logo and if it's something fun they'll be interested in it and they'll want to play it again and that way you can sneak in that academics and definitely book it makes it a lot of fun so i recommend if i had to pick two one from the universe side and that side but check out flippity.net for easy access to all of those fun things to instantly make because it makes gamification fast and easy. Thanks for the question. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, go ahead and type them in. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna share a little bit of information about the Autism Educator Support Alliance um, and the parent groups that this alliance has grown out of. Um, we do have a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. Again, that link um, to this video when it's posted will be shared um, uh, because you attended uh, the presentation and registered today. And you will also be able to find on that page uh, the posts for previous webinars that we have hosted. Uh, and if you would like to uh, like our Facebook page, uh, you can find it there at, at Autism Educator Support Alliance. We, in addition to doing these webinars, we also have a resource library for accessing um, both books and materials that are instructional, but also uh, being able to borrow actual manipulatives, timers, um, a wide variety of things, and you can find more information about that. The one at Misericordia is up and running, right, Kristen? Um, uh, ours in Hazleton is not quite there yet, um, but will be within the next couple of months. We will also have uh, resources to borrow at our hub as well. So Kristen and I both run um, autism resource hubs through the autism centers, um, autism collaborative centers of excellence. Um, I run the hub in Hazleton and Kristen runs the one at Misericordia in Dallas. Uh, if you are looking for any um, information about autism or would like to share any information with your families, um, with uh, other educators. Um, we also offer resources and assistance, a lot of other programming besides the Educator Alliance. Uh, and our information, uh, contact information, emails, and our individual Facebook pages are listed here on this slide. Um, one exciting thing we do have coming up, uh, if you wanna, yep is uh, we do have uh, a webinar coming up, or I, I guess it's a, yeah, it is a webinar, a panel coming up um, on April 15th at six o'clock. Um, that is a panel of three self-advocates who are going to be talking about semantics in a neurodiverse world. So we've all probably heard a lot about the discussion of identity first language, person first language, um, and what that means in, in a diverse um, world when we're talking about autism, um, when we're talking about uh, other disabilities in general. So we would love to have um, all of you attend, um, ask questions. Um, if you're interested, Chris Bonello, who is one of the 
participants that is going to be on the panel on April 15th also did a webinar. He is a self-advocate who is an educator. Uh, he lives in England uh, and he is actually diagnosed on the autism spectrum, but is also an educator. And he did a wonderful presentation for us a few months ago, which you can also find on the, the YouTube page. Uh, just talking about, you know, what he uh, would like us all to know about some ideas about making classrooms more uh, friendlier and more inclusive. So that is a great presentation for you all to check out uh, on the website or on the YouTube if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, that the link and registration for this information will also be shared on the Facebook pages. So you'll be able to go there and register for this webinar as well. So I'm, we're very excited that you all joined us tonight. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add, Kristen? Oh, I, I think, I think that is it, but um, okay. thanks again, Samantha, for sharing all that information, um, certainly making classrooms more fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me.